from Hollywood, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Ruth, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Most men who have found the right woman are content to settle down to a life of happiness. But there comes a time in every man's life when he asks himself this question. Why did I ever get married? <laughs> What's the matter, Claude? You ain't happy here? <laughs> Certainly. Happy as a bird dog. No, I didn't mean that, Alice. That's nothing to do with you. I guess it's just the weather. Spring is in the air. And well, it... It makes me want to feel free to roam. I want to shake my shackles. Go ahead and shake them. But be careful. The last time you shook them, you almost fell apart. Please. <laughs> well, honey, it's, it's just that this time of year, I feel like a little colt who wants to scamper through the fields. I want to be like the mighty eagle soaring amid the lofty crags. Are like the nimble little young deer skipping gaily across. Down, Rex. <laughs> First I'm Claude, now I'm Rex. You'd better forget it, Phil. You just got up and you can't think clearly yet. No, I'm not going to forget it. Why can't I be like a nimble young deer, free to roam the forest? Because you're a middle aged goat and I'm keeping you home. <laughs> Honey, when I feel spring in my bones, I just have to get away for a while. You feel that way every year. All you need is a spring tonic. Well, all right. Maybe that'll help. Go make me a bourbon and molasses. <laughs> bourbon and molasses? I don't think you have the right combination. Okay, forget the molasses. Make it with ginger ale. <laughs> Why is it that every once in a while you, you, you want to get away? Well, it's not just me, honey. Every man wants to get away once in a while. He likes to go fishing or hunting with the boys. Oh, every man doesn't feel that way. Well, I tell you, they do. And if you don't believe me, just ask another man. All right. I'll ask my brother. Willie, come in here, please. Oh, you're asking a good kid. <laughs> well, Willie's a man, isn't he? For the sake of argument, yes. <laughs> But I meant a real He-Man He is a He-Man What do you want, Alice? I'm very busy playing with the children Well, I, I just want to ask you a question Just a moment Phyllis, don't stand too close to the plate And watch the batter Hey, Willie, are you teaching the girls how to play baseball? No, I'm showing them how to bake a cake <laughs> I don't want Phyllis to knock the batter off the plate I knew it, I knew it <laughs> Uh, what uh, what do you want, sis? Well, Phil and I were having an argument, and we want your opinion. I agree with Alice. You're wrong, Philip. <laughs> I didn't even hear the argument. How do you know I'm wrong? Well, you're never right, and even if you were, I wouldn't admit it. <laughs> Willie, let's be fair about this. I want you to consider Phil's point of view as well as mine, and I don't expect you to side with me just because I happen to be the generous sister who supports you. <laughs> now that you've bribed the jury, let's present the case Well, Willie, Phil claims that every married man wants to desert his family And run away with a native girl to Bali High <laughs> What Bali High? What native girl? All I want to do is to go fishing in Lake Henshaw with a white woman. I mean, the boy. <laughs> Willie, doesn't every man get spring fever about this time of year and want to get off by himself? That's right, Philip. I think it's particularly good for married men. I think every married man should get away from his wife for a few times. Willie, that's enough. Let this doll talk. <laughs> Go ahead, you precious little brother-in-law Alice, a, a marital vacation will do you good, too Every wife should get away from a husband Particularly a husband like this <laughs> All right 
I'll admit I'm a difficult man to live with. Charming, but difficult. <laughs> and Alice, I think you're entitled to a rest away from me. I agree with you, Phil. You do? Yes. And I think it's very sweet of you to offer to stay home with the children while I go to Palm Springs. Tilt! <laughs> now, do you mean that you'd go to Palm Springs and leave your family, shirk your responsibilities, just so you can have a good time? Who do you think you are, me? <laughs> I'm the one who's supposed to go away. Phil, I forbid you to go. You forbid me? <laughs> it is to laugh. <laughs> Look, if I want to go, I'll go. I'll just get up like this and walk across the room, open the door, and goodbye. Are you going to let him go? He won't get very far. He walked into the hall closet. <laughs> well, Phil, I thought you were going. Too dark out. <laughs> I'll wait till tomorrow morning. <laughs> Smog gets thicker in this town every day. <laughs> Philip, you walked into the hall closet. Hall? Oh. Well, this time I'm walking out the front door like this. Hey, Willie, he really went. I, I didn't think he... Oh, uh, Phil, I knew you'd come back. How far can I go without my pants? <laughs> Why doesn't somebody tell me these things? Forgot I'm still in my PJs. Now, Phil, get dressed and forget the whole silly thing. Now, excuse me, I have some work to do. Yeah, yeah. Forget it, she said. She dismisses me as if I were nothing at all. That's a trouble with women. We never should have given them the right to vote. <laughs> women should be kept in their place. They belong in a kitchen. Uh, come in. If I had my way, I'd put all the women in the world in one big kitchen. Where is this kitchen, Curly? I'm in the mood to do a little cooking. <laughs> oh, hello, Frankie. What's bothering you? Oh, it's Alice. Whenever I want to do something, she forbids it. What do you mean, she forbids it? This is a free country. You're a citizen. There ain't nobody in the world who can tell you what to do. Except Petrillo. <laughs> I might just as well be married to him. No, no, I don't want to go that far. <laughs> Look, Frankie, I'd like your opinion. Well, I'll be glad to help you. I'm known as a worldly man, wise and sophisticated, a deep thinker and quite a philosopher. <laughs> what do you want to know? What do you think of women? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Errol Flynn. <laughs> I'm not talking about women I'm talking about wives I'm mad at Alice Why are you mad at her? I'll tell you why I'm mad at her She thinks that just because She's pretty Soft And Smells nice and When she gets into my arms She's so cuddly And sweet And Nice to hold And And uh, And you're mad at her Mad? Who, me? <laughs> How are you going to be mad? All right, you... Curly. Come on, snap out of it. Think of the nasty thing she does. Oh, yeah, nasty. Well, you know that I, I told her that I want to go away with the guys for just a few days for a little harmless fun, and she won't believe me? I can't understand it. Neither can I. I believe you, and I know you're not telling the truth. <laughs> I am telling the truth. I thought that you and I and a couple of the guys could, well, just get in the car and go away for a nice rest. You know, to some place that's peaceful and, and quiet. I got just the place, Curly. Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas is quiet. Yeah. I know a place that just put in a sponge rubber crap table. <laughs> can't hear the dice. All right, 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 right. <laughs> Come out of it. What's the use? If you don't want me to go, I'll just have to stay home and be miserable. Oh, don't be so discouraged. We'll think of a way out. And cheer up. How can I cheer up when I feel like a prisoner? What's well, easy? What do you usually do to cheer yourself up? I sing. Why do I keep bleeding with my chin? <laughs> He 
carries her picture in his pocket. Twas taken the day he went to sea. He carries her picture in his locket. Though she is as ugly as can be. Oh, what a face. Oh, what a face. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. To be showing it in any public place. One morning he took her to a pig farm. He told her to wait down by the rail. But when he returned, he couldn't find her. The farmer had put her up for sale. Oh, what a face. Oh, what a face. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. To be showing it in any public place. She always liked to watch the horses when they were racing at the track. Until the day she wandered near the stable and the jockey threw a saddle on her back. Oh, what a map. Oh, what a map. It's a mishap. It's a mishap. To be showing it in any public trap. Her father arranged for her to marry some fella who had never seen the bride. But when she raised the veil to let him kiss her, he screamed and had committed suicide. Oh, what a face. Oh, there's Mary. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to be showing it in any public place. He carried her picture in his pocket. He kept it till his ship went down at sea. Twas then that he took the little locket and packed it in a box and set it free. And now that picture in the locket is floating around from sea to sea. And if by chance you ever find it, don't open it up or you will see that awful face. It's a disgrace to be showing it in any public place. Well, Frankie, now I feel better. Well, that's understandable. Having a good cry like that always makes a person. <laughs> hey, Curly, I thought of a way to get you out of the house for a few days. You did? How? Start shaking. You're about to have a nervous breakdown. Nervous break? Yeah. <laughs> that should spring me, huh? Okay, let's go in to see Alice. Not so fast. This has to be done subtly. Now, I'll set it up for you. I'll go in and tell Alice that you're acting a little irrational. Yeah. Then you come in, and when we speak to you, don't make too much sense. Let your mind wander a little bit. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, good. <laughs> I'll go in to Alice. Don't you come in for a couple of minutes. No, I, I won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah, this ought to work like a charm. You'll never suspect. Oh, Alice, where are you? Well, right here, Frankie. Where's Phil? I left him in the other room. Alice... I want to talk to you about him. I don't want to alarm you, but I think he's on the verge of a mental breakdown. How can you tell? <laughs> well, when he talks, he doesn't make sense. He never did. <laughs> True. But he seems to be getting worse. His mind wanders. Oh, Frankie, you're just imagining things. No, no, I'm not. Why, I, when I was talking to him just now... Oh, here he comes. Hiya, Curly. Oh, hello, Frankie. Wasn't I just talking to you in the hall? Yeah. That's funny. I could have sworn I was. Oh, well, it's a small world. Alice, where are my pinking shears? <laughs> what do you want with pinking shears? I thought I'd make scallops for dinner. <laughs> See what I mean, Alice? No, that doesn't prove anything. He always tells bad jokes. <laughs> feel all right, Phil? Oh, of course I do. I love hospital beds, don't you? Oh, on a day like this, it's so good to be alive. Don't you wish you were, Frankie? <laughs> You're acting very peculiar. The way you talk, I can't understand you. Well, you could if you took your snowshoes off. <laughs> you know, maybe you'd better go upstairs and lie down. Oh, so that's it. You want to be alone with Mr. Klingfinger here. <laughs> How dare you come into my house and make love to my wife behind my back? But, Phil... Quiet, John. I'm speaking to Marcia. <laughs> you have a lot of nerve sneaking in. 
I didn't sneak in. Then how come you're disguised as a zebra? <laughs> one thing I can't stand, it's a woman who steals another man's wife. Anyone for tennis? <laughs> You're overdoing it. I can't stop. <laughs> Phil, honey, sit down and I'll get you a drink. Oh, goody. I would love a cup of tea. Tea? <laughs> oh, he really blew a fuse. <laughs> I'll pour the tea. How many lumps, Frankie? Two. <laughs> Got in the head, Morris. <laughs> no, I don't believe I want any tea. Now, nonsense. You just hold your... Cup still while I climb up on the edge and dive in. Ooh, it's so refreshing to be a tea bag. <laughs> Have you been a tea bag long? Oh, yeah. Mother was an orange and father was a pico. Who are you? <laughs> I'm the guy who's sorry he started this whole thing. <laughs> oh, I know. You're Mr. Hess, who has a department store in Allenstown, Pennsylvania. How are your escalators running? All right, Phil, I catch on. If you want to go away for two days that badly, you can go. I can? Oh, Alberta, you're a peach. <laughs> <laughs> Has the gardener sprayed you lately? <laughs> I don't like this kind of talk. This might be the beginning of a new kind of a thing for me. I might be... <laughs> Shut I'm... up. Maybe, maybe there is something wrong with him. Maybe he ought to stay home and rest. Oh, oh, no, Alice. He needs medical treatment. And there's only one man to take him to. Dr. Schiller. Who is he? The house doctor at the Flamingo in Las Vegas. <laughs> You never heard of Abe Schiller, world-famous neurologist and blackjack dealer? What? <laughs> Alice, we're not going to Las Vegas. Now, Phil, I don't care where you go as long as you behave yourself. Hey, Rem, did you hear that? We can do whatever we want for two days. No family responsibility. Yeah, no kids to look after, no wife to report to, nobody to tell me when I come in, when I go out, no... What am I getting excited about? I'm single. I can do this anytime I want. One thing, Frankie. I don't want you to lead Phil into any of your bad habits. Whatever do you mean? I don't... I don't want you to show him how to gamble or teach him how to drink. <laughs> teach him how to... That's like trying to show Einstein how to add. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. Frankie's not gonna lead me astray because there's gonna be no drinking on this trip. We're just gonna get in the car and ride along, top down. Bottoms up. Here's mud. No! <laughs> On this trip, I think you want Now, wait to... a minute, Alice. This is my trip, and I don't want it spoiled by a wife telling me what to do. For two days, let's pretend we're not married. All right. We'll do it your way. Starting right now, we're not married. Good, okay. good. Oh, boy, I can't wait to get started on this trip. Hey, Alice, where are the keys to the car? In my purse. Well, let me have them. I want to get the car out. Oh, I couldn't let you have the car. Why not? It belongs to my husband. He's gone away for two days. You'll have to wait until he gets back and ask... All right, all right. <laughs> you can keep the car. We don't need your old car anyway. We'll use Frankie's car. That's okay with you, ain't it, Remley? Sure, that's okay with me. But we might have a little trouble getting it away from my partner. What partner? Seaboard Finance Company. <laughs> then again? It seems like they always have it. Yeah, they're very repossessive. Yeah, no. <laughs> Look, we can't go any place without a car, and we've got. Oh, uh, Alice, darling. Sorry, stranger. But Alice, we need a car. Oh, won't you please? Well, I might let you have it if you do something for me. Okay. What do you want me to do? Ask me to sing. <laughs> All right. Honey. Will you please sing? But only do one course. We gotta get started. Yes. <laughs> I only want 
got the best thing for you And the best thing for you would be me I've been convinced after thinking it through That the best thing for you would be me Every day to myself I say Point the way, what will it be? I ask myself, what's the best thing for you? And myself and I seem to agree That the best thing for you would be me I know that I only want what's the best thing for you, and the best thing for you would be me. Every day to myself I say, point the way, what'll it be? I ask myself, What's the best thing for you and myself and I seem to agree that the best thing for you, the very best thing for you, the best thing for you would be me. <laughs> you to sing. Now can I have the car? No. <laughs> well, why not? I didn't like the way you listened. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. Come on, Curly. I got a lot of friends. One of them will lend us his car. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Curly. I guess our trip's off. Tried all my friends and none of them would loan me a car. Well, no wonder. None of your friends owned a car. <laughs> Half of them didn't even have shoes. <laughs> They're not allowed to wear shoes in their business. It's unsanitary to press grapes with your shoes on. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? I thought they were wearing purple socks. <laughs> Remley, we can't call this trip off. It ain't every day a married man gets a parole like this. Look, we just got to get a car. Yeah. <coughs> hey, Curly, look. What? In front of the market. Julius' delivery truck. Frankie, hmm? what fool scheme have you got in your conniving little mind? And remember, you talked me into it. <laughs> That delivery truck would be perfect for a fishing trip. That's right, but there ain't no sense talking to that little goon. He ain't gonna let you borrow nothing. He'd give you nothing. Who said anything about asking him? <laughs> well, we can't deliberately take it. Suppose it was an accident. Suppose we accidentally got in the truck and it accidentally started to roll down the hill and we couldn't stop it until it got to Lake Henshaw. <laughs> Wouldn't be our fault, would it? True. <laughs> yeah, but there's only one trouble. What's that? It ain't parked on a hill. <laughs> we can push it till we find one. <laughs> Friendly, I think we should ask permission. Oh, no, that'll kill it. We'll just borrow it and pay him for it when we get back. Now, come on, no one's around. Let's get in the truck. Hey, Remley, I don't know oh, if we ought to... Well, I wonder where the keys are. They're not in the ignition. Look in the glove compartment, Curly. They're not in the glove compartment. Now look in my pocket, you car thief! <laughs> June, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? It's my truck. Truck? Ain't this the Fairfax bus? <laughs> I love transfers, don't you, Mr. Hess? All right, we're through with that routine. Oh, yeah? I've been hiding in the back of the truck waiting for you guys. Waiting? How'd you know we were coming? The Harris Remley alarm went off. <laughs> what are you talking about? As soon as you guys get 
it within 50 feet of this block, bells ring, lights flash, and every storekeeper is alerted for a catastrophe. <laughs> what are you creeps up to now? Creeps? Well, we, we want to go on a fishing trip, and, and we want to borrow your truck. And if you don't lend it to us, we won't be able to go. Oh, well, that's different, fellas. I know what fishing means to a guy, because I like to fish myself. Makes you feel good to get outdoors and forget the turmoil of everyday life. So if you want my truck, fellas, there's only one thing I can say. What? You ain't getting it! <laughs> hey, Curly, you hold him. Let me back the truck over him. Just one. <laughs> Why waste the gas? Look, Curly, why bother asking the kid? Let's just take the truck. You can't do that, fellas. Remember, I got the keys. Where have you got it? In my mouth. In that case, we'll just turn you upside down and shake it out of you. I have to tell him where it is yet. Get away from me, you guys. Grab his feet, Curly. Turn him upside down. Got him. Don't move me. Don't do this to me. Shake him good, Frank. Yeah. yeah. Shake him. Fellas, please let me go. Don't talk to me, little head on the sidewalk. <laughs> Better stop, Remley. We're cracking the cement. <laughs> Okay, let him drop. What's the matter with you guys? You're crazy or something? Now, don't get excited. <laughs> What's the matter with you, kid? Can't you take a joke? <laughs> a joke? I used my skull for a pneumatic drill and I should yuck it up yet. <laughs> Quiet, no sense of humor. Remley, did the key fall out of his mouth? Let me look. Yeah, here's the key ring light. No, these are his braces. <laughs> Julius, won't you please let us take your truck? We may go about things in the wrong way, but, but deep down, kid, we really love you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you prove that every week. <laughs> I really like you guys, and to prove there's no hard feelings, I'm gonna help you. You gonna let us have your truck? I can't let you have this one, it's brand new. But I can let you have our, uh, old truck. Oh, gee, thanks, kid. Where is it? It's that black truck parked in front of this one. Hey, Julius, we really appreciate this, and I want you to Stop know... Stop yapping and driving away before I change my mind. Come on, Remley, we better go. Let's yeah. hurry. You'll find the keys in the ignition. Have a nice vacation. Thanks again, Julius. <laughs> be before the cops miss that patrol wagon. <laughs> this is Phil again. This year, the Red Cross Drive takes on a new and even greater importance. The Red Cross must not only bear its responsibility for any civilian disasters, it must also bear a new burden, preparedness for any or all demands in this continuing world crisis. And the blood program is urgent for our wounded in Korea. Give Red Cross a bigger place in your budget this year. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> This program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Theater Guild presents a five-star presentation later. Now, Hedda Hopper on NBC.